Alright guys, so I'm not sure exactly what my stock is going to be here, but in the meantime, I did order a Bushnell TRS-25 red dot sight for my 1022, and I got this overnight shipped here, which was actually same day, so that I would have it in time for my trip to the shooting range. So, it is New Year's Eve right now, and it's nighttime, so chances are there's probably going to be some fireworks during this video, so I do apologize in advance for that. And here's the site, so we'll just pop that out of there. I don't think there's an invoice in there. And here is the product box itself. As you can see, Bushnell TRS-25. But like I said, I got this overnight shipped here so that I would have it in time to go to the range on Thursday. And there are pieces of tape holding the lid on that I didn't notice at first. So we'll just slice right through those two. <clears throat> Once again, this knife is very dull. I do need to get it sharpened again, but who knows when I'll actually get on that. So Pull the lid off, and you've got a thing telling you to register your site for your warranty. I'll have to read into that a little bit more because extended warranties are always a good thing. You've got a microfiber cleaning cloth to clean the lenses on the um, red dot itself. <clears throat> you've got a little manual. Probably how to zero it, how to install it, all that kind of stuff. And then here's the red dot itself. And underneath there is a little Allen key, which I thought you would have to provide, but it actually comes in the package, so that's a little bonus. Let's get the red dot out of the plastic. <clears throat> and as you can see, this is a very small red dot site. Um, let's pop this off and see if it's actually got any battery in it or not. It does appear to have battery. So, there you can see the red dot. <clears throat> now, I do have this sight on way too high of a brightness for inside, which is why it looks as crappy as it does right there. But apparently, especially for $100, this is a very nice sight. So I decided to pick it up and try it out, and it should be plenty more than enough for a 10-22. <clears throat> so, as you can see, it's a very short, small little sight. Um, it just mounts on. That's what that Allen key is for. It's so you can actually mount it, and it just screws this in tighter or looser. And your adjustment caps, or your adjustment knobs are covered with little caps, so we'll take those off. And underneath you can see that you adjust your elevation and your windage with a flathead screwdriver or really anything that'll fit into that little notch and then you would cover them back up with your um, caps of course so that you don't lose the cap <clears throat> and as for changing the battery this little cap unscrews so I guess we'll take a peek at what battery they include and I'm not sure exactly how to get that battery out of there, but to me it looks like a generic battery. So we'll see how long that one lasts. And then as you can see on the front here, there's this mirror finish. It's kind of orange slash red. And that is basically so that it can project the LED to make the red dot itself. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this on my 1022, so I'm going to get all that stuff out here and we'll mount it in just a second. Alright guys, so I got everything I'm going to need to put this red dot onto the rifle. So of course I've got the rifle safety checked, all empty. Couple screwdrivers, um, the scope mount that comes with the rifle as well as the four screws for that. And some Loctite, and I can't remember if I already said the sight, but of course I need the sight. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whole rifle apart and get the bolt out of it and everything so that when I'm putting the scope mount on with Loctite, if I drip a little bit into the receiver, it doesn't somehow bind up the bolt. So I'm just going to get the stock off of here first of all. Alright guys, so I've got the stock off of this, and now it's just time to pop off the trigger group and get the bolt out, which is just these three pins right here that I'm just going to push out with the screwdriver because I don't actually have a punch 
handy anyways. Okay, so now the bolt is out, as well as the charging handle. So I'm just going to kind of move most of the stuff off to the side here. And by the way, I have not cleaned this rifle since my last range trip. So I think while this is apart, I'm probably going to end up cleaning that. But of course, since that's not actually related to this video, I'm not going to show that. So, so what I'm actually going to do is clean that right now, just so that if I get any Loctite drip down here, it'll be really easy to clean off instead of getting mixed with all the gunk. So I'm going to come back with this receiver nice and cleaned up. Well guys, it is now officially 2014 and I think all the fireworks have stopped. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of continue with this now that I've got it all cleaned out on the inside. Is I'm going to put the scope mount on. So first of course i got to take out these four screws. Alright guys, so I got all of those screws out and... Basically, as you can see, they're just plugs to keep the threads clean and to keep excess dirt from getting down into the receiver. So, there's actually like a little bit of carbon buildup coming out of these holes, so I'm going to kind of see if I can get the insides of the threads cleaned out before I put the screws in, so I'll be right back with that cleaned up. Alright guys, so I got those four screw holes cleaned out as best as I can without an ultrasonic cleaner, and now what I got to do is just kind of line this up on the four holes and put these screws in so kind of like I did with my other scope mount I'm going to put a screw in first to kind of keep everything lined up while I put Loctite on the rest of the screws and now I can put Loctite on the other three and then I can back that screw out and put Loctite on it Alright, so all four of those screws are now in there with Loctite, and there's a little bit of spillover on here, but that can pretty much just be wiped off. And if we take a look on the inside, I don't think I put too much on any of those because I don't see any spillover into the receiver. But it was still a good idea to take it apart and just make sure that I wouldn't get any spillover. <clears throat> So now, all that I've got left to do is put the red dot on here and tighten this down. So I'm going to kind of put the rifle back together and just see whether I like it up here or back here. Not that it makes a ton of difference. Um, I know generally they, people say to mount it as far forward as you can, but I'm going to make sure that that actually works and that that really does give the best image through the site. So I'll be right back once I figure out where exactly I want the site put on. Alright guys, so I figured out right about where on the rail I want this optic at. So now what I'm going to do is put just a little bit of Loctite on this thread right here. And then just begin screwing in the other side of the rail mount clamp. And just start threading it on a little bit. And then I'm just going to pop it on to the rifle where I want it at. And now I can screw this Allen key the rest of the way in and snug it down nice and tight. And then that Loctite should hold the screw in there pretty well. And hopefully it'll keep it zero and such. So I'm just going to get this cranked down all the way. Alright, so the optic is on there as tight as it's going to get, or as tight as it needs to be at least, since I have Loctite on that screw. And now what I've got to do is put the rifle back together, but since that's not really what this video is about, I'm going to do that off camera and I'll be back with my 1022 all completely back together. Alright guys, so I've got the rifle completely reassembled, and the only thing really left to do with this now would be to bore sight the red dot if I was going to do that. But since I don't own a bore sight, 
The only real thing that I have left to do is go to the range and just shoot at some paper and get this thing on target. Now, since I don't live at a range, although I wish I did, um, I'm going to have to wait until I can go to the range to actually get this sighted in. Now, luckily, that should only be a couple days from now, which by the time you're watching this should be in the past. And maybe I'll record some videos there, maybe I won't. We'll just have to kind of see how the day's going. But anyways, guys, that's about it for this video. So if you enjoyed it, please do click the like button, as that does help me out. Also, leave me a comment about anything that I did well at or anything that I could improve. And if you would like to see more of my videos, then please do click subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.